Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I'm working on a line cooler uh, that's underneath this broiler. So as you can see here, our condenser fan is not on, our compressor is not on. So let's go right to our pressure switch. We have 120 volts across the pressure switch. That means the pressure switch is open. So right now we're at 44 PSI. And if I can zoom in onto this guy right here, you can see our cut in is 40 and our cut out is 55 so we're waiting for 55 psi um, most likely we're low on charger the fact that it's shut off so we are back on here compressors on we're at 39 psi and if we look closely here at our sight glass it's going to be kind of hard to see here there's a bunch of crud on it but um, we're about halfway full okay so potentially a low charge but we want to check our airflow and look at this Vapor fan is running. We are frozen on both sides of the evaporator. Okay, so that's why our sight glass is low. So let's go ahead and uh, get some water on here, spray it up, uh, get rid of all this ice. This is going to obviously take a lot of time. It's going to be time consuming. Um, I find this is the fastest way to spray the water on. I got a little bucket set up here, a pan to catch the water so I'm not flooding the kitchen. And as you can see here, our water pan is not dropping or draining. Okay, there's no ice in the pan. So there's a clue as to why we potentially had a freeze up. All right, we got everything defrosted. Everything's good to go. It took a while, but we're all good. Now, if we come here, we still have water in this pan. So that means our drain tubing is backed up. So I like to blow from the pan out into the uh, drain pan, obviously. In this case, I won't be able to do that. The way they set up the pan, uh, the evaporator coil in the pan, I won't be able to get uh, air in there. So let's just blow this out with some nitrogen. And let's see if we can clear out whatever the blockage is. And there we go. She's flowing really good. So we definitely had a blockage in that drain tubing, which potentially caused this freeze up. All right, next, I just want to get everything cleaned up. You can see there that was the condensate loop, so there's no way to evaporate this water. Let's get some Viper on there. Let's make this thing a little bit more comfortable to work on. All right, I fired the unit back up, and let's see if we can fill up this sight glass. There you can see the evaporator fan is definitely running. All right, so uh, let's just see if this sight glass is gonna fill up, whether we're doing a leak test or not. Let's see why we had freeze up. So we're at 56 PSI. And we have a full sight glass. So if we look at 56 PSI and we have 55 Fahrenheit. So if we compare, it's a 32, 55 uh, split there. So that's a 23 evaporator coil split, which is fine for a reach in. All right, now we're down to 39 Fahrenheit. And this thing's taking forever to cool, so you can see these gaps in the door. So I did get the gaps repaired, and as you can see now, we're dropping down in temperature. We're at 40 PSI and 36. So I'm going to adjust this pressure switch here. So as you can see right now, it is set to just above 40 PSI. I want this thing to shut off, okay? because we're gonna get a freeze up and this is potentially the reason why we have a freeze up. So we're down to 35, that's kind of where I'm comfortable. We're down to 40 PSI compressor. It's still pumping away. So we're gonna adjust this pressure switch here. If I can get the screwdriver on. And we're just going to adjust the cutting pressure up. So we're gonna increase the number until we hear the compressor cut off. All right, and we just heard the click. So the compressor has shut off, it's set around, let's call it, let me see if I can focus this thing in, we'll say around, wow. struggling here, so it's set around 46, where it should be at 40, so we're definitely having issues with this pressure switch, uh, we don't want to adjust temperature with the pressure switch, it's just not accurate, um, it's not my preferred way of doing it, and we'll go over that in a couple minutes. So now we're gonna fire back up at looks like 55 PSI. So let's figure out what 55 PSI is gonna be. All right, so the unit just fired back up. 
and we're at 36 Fahrenheit so that means we're turning off at 35 Fahrenheit turning back on at 36 Fahrenheit um, this thing is gonna short cycle like crazy so we got to set this thing up a little bit better pressure switch and how it works and why I don't feel like it's accurate for this specific type of application okay it's good for pumping down or as a safety for we don't want the compressor to run with no gas in it okay and that's probably what it was meant for in this application all right so we have our cut out and our cut in so our cut out is basically once we get to this pressure we're going to shut the compressor off so right now our it was set to 40 psi you can see it's not accurate so if we go to 40 psi so 39.9 it's about 17 fahrenheit Okay, so we do have a TXV, so we're probably working with a 20 TD. So we're going to take our current box temp, which was about, uh, we cycled off at 35, let's call it 36, was kind of where it was. And then we're going to subtract 20 Fahrenheit, that's our TD, and that's going to give us 16 Fahrenheit, and our pressure is telling us it's 17 Fahrenheit. Okay, so it's saying once the saturation temperature of the refrigerant is 17 Fahrenheit let's shut off the condensing unit so in this case we're coming down to 16 Fahrenheit okay 16 Fahrenheit is going to equal 40 psi okay so when our saturation temperature gets to 16 Fahrenheit which equals 36 box temperature that is when we're going to cut out now cut back in we had it set to um, 55 psi so if we go on our PT here, 55 PSI is equal to 30 Fahrenheit. So that means if our refrigerant saturation temperature is 30 Fahrenheit, the box is going to be 20 more. Okay, so that means our cut in is 50 Fahrenheit. Right now our cut in is 36 Fahrenheit. So you can see this thing gets really inaccurate. And when it gets even makes it more inaccurate is if Things like if the condenser gets plugged, it's going to change all the pressures and the temperature within the box. Okay, so that's why I do not like using these pressure switches, but this is how you set them. Okay, so on our cut out, we're going to subtract 20 and then our cut in, we're going to add 20 to get our box temp. Alright, so now I've adjusted the pressure switch cut in so that we're at 39 Fahrenheit, which is 51 PSI. That's what it likes. That's the number it wants. And we're going to adjust the cut out to 42 psi now so 42 psi is now equal to 35 you just saw there the compressor shut off and uh, you can see the inaccuracies there now because before we're at 40 cut out now we're at 42 cut out all right so as you can see there I was at 42 psi and my box temp was 35 Fahrenheit and it was still calling for cooling. So I had to adjust the pressure switch to 42 PSI is now my cutout. But remember earlier, 40 PSI was our cutout and it was shutting off at 36. So that's why these things are super, super inaccurate. So we're going to recommend that they install an A421 uh, temp controller, digital temp controller. That's my go-to. I like to use that one. Uh, and you can even program the defrost if you get the A421 ABD. And then I had to adjust my cut in to 52 PSI, which ended up equaling 39 Fahrenheit. So uh, two reasons why we most likely had to freeze up. At first it looked like it was low on charge. So I want you to pay attention to that. The sight glass is low, but the coil's frozen. So the sight glass no longer matters until we get that coil defrosted and we have full airflow over that evaporator coil then we can assess the sight glass okay i know a lot of people will get stuck on that they'll pull up to that call and do a leak test right away um, there was no need to okay so we ruled out a low charge the drain pan was not draining so we definitely had to freeze up from there and then also this pressure switch uh was an issue because it's it was uh we're at 35 Fahrenheit and it was still calling for cooling. So this thing probably would have pulled down to below 30. So second reason why. And then the third reason why was, as you saw earlier, that door was not closing fully. So I ended up kind of pushing the door frame back and putting some screw, longer screws into it. So now the door seals are all um, sealing correctly as they should be. Uh, and at this point, the recommendation is to putting in a temp controller. Uh, it's not been approved. It would have been nice to show you guys how to install that and how to set it up. Uh, if it does get approved, 
Um, I'll definitely make a part two on that, on how to install an A421. And then we'll use that pressure switch as a safety. So how you use the pressure switch as a safety is, so right now the cutout was 40 PSI, okay? I'm gonna set the cutout to probably 20 PSI. And then if we go on our PT, so 20 PSI all the way down here, which is minus four Fahrenheit. Okay, so if we go based on minus four Fahrenheit, we add 20 Fahrenheit, and that would give us a 16 Fahrenheit box temp, okay? So I would set it to 20 PSI so that even if we lose a little bit of charge, the unit can still run, okay? They'll see it's taking forever to get the temperature, but at least it doesn't shut them down completely, and then it'll pull down and it'll slowly start to freeze up, but I'm putting 20 PSI as a safety, Okay, because if I lose all the refrigerant in this system and I can't get out there for two days, I do not want this thing running with no gas in the system. And then basically our compressor is running in a vacuum and just sucking in air. And then, you know, that turns into non condensables even though there's no gas in the system. But we have contamination in the system. So that's how I would set up this pressure switch as a safety only. Okay, so hopefully they do approve this because uh, it will be a nice service call to show how to set up uh, an A421 and install it in this type of cabinet.